Hey y'all, welcome to part 5 of my series on the Vectric software titles for the absolute beginner. First of all, I am in no way endorsed nor sponsored by Vectric Limited or any other software title or company at all. I'm doing this series to help the person who has never done anything like this before get into the CAD CAM software and be able to create and finish a project in the CAD CAM software. Today we're going to get into one of the more popular features within the Vectric title and everything I'm going to show you today works equally in Cut2D, VCarve, and Aspire by Vectric Limited. One of the more popular features is the ability to import vectors drawn up in another CAD program into VCarve, for example. Today we're going to focus on the DXF file. Now, for those who, let's take a step back here, for those who don't know what a DXF file is, I'll just throw it up here from Wikipedia. The DXF file was made by AutoCAD in the early 80s. Uh, well, it was made for AutoCAD by Autodesk. It stands for uh, Drawing Exchange Format or Drawing Interchange Format. And it was simply a file that could be opened either in AutoCAD or any of the other CAD programs available at the time. So it was a quick way for folks to interchange drawings. It broke everything down to its basic information so that you could import the drawing without all of the proprietary information needed by an Autodesk title like AutoCAD or something like TurboCAD. So it was a way for people working on different software platforms to exchange those drawings. It for a while became the standard way for CNCers to exchange drawings. So if you had, if you were working in uh, VCarve and you had somebody who was using Bobcad, for example, you could export a DXF file of your drawing and that person could open it up and could import those vectors into their program. It's still used today, but not as much as it was a few years back. There are other ways of, uh, and other formats now that are being used. Now, the main thing to remember about the DXF file is the overwhelming majority of them are 2D vector drawings. Let's go ahead and get into one such vector drawing just to show you uh, what I'm talking about here. So we'll start by creating a new file. And I'm going to go ahead and make this just accept whatever's in here. In this case, it happens to be a 12-inch width and X, 12-inch height and Y, and a 3-quarter inch thickness. It's a single-sided project. Again, my Z0 is set to the material surface. And for layout purposes, I'm going to run my XY datum at the center of the material. We'll go ahead and click OK. To import the vectors from a DXF file, there are, as usual in a Windows-based program, several ways of doing it. Probably the easiest of which will be come up to the File menu and come down to Import Vectors. That's what we're importing. We'll click on that and we'll come down here into this folder I've created for this episode. And we have three DXF files here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this one and open it. And we don't see anything here. This is something that's pretty common when importing DXF files. So let me go ahead and just roll my scroll wheel back, zoom out, and there's our vectors over there. And this has to do, this is one of those things kind of built into the uh, CAD file format, the DXF format. Here is my zero, zero point. This is the origin. So the CAD file, when it was drawn, 
this set of vectors were drawn over here in reference to the zero, zero point, the origin. So the drawing is placed over here. Now what I want to do is I want to center it on my material so we see it's already pink, it's already selected when we import it. I'll come over here under my Transform Objects menu and click Align Selected Objects. Align Selected Objects is broken down into a couple of different areas here. What I want to do is I want to align these vectors to the material. I want to align it horizontally as well as vertically. So we have this center here, this center icon. When I click that icon, it moves the center of those vectors to my zero, zero point. So now I can close that. Now I need to resize it. So I'm going to come back over here under Transform Objects to Set Selected Object Size. Click on this and we can see, yeah, it's a 40 inch diameter set of vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have Link XY checked. I'm going to come up here into the Width and X and I want to make this 10 inch diameter. So we'll just type 10. We see the height in Y also changes because of this check mark. We'll click Apply. Then Close. And now I can click off to deselect those vectors. One of the things that CAD programs tend to do is they break vectors up into their separate elements. So when I select this outside circle and I see the entire thing light up in the pink dashes, I can see right now that it is a closed vector. This is a closed vector that we can use in vCarve, meaning this is all one vector that has a start point and an end point on the same point. Let me click on this inside circle and we see it's the same. This is a closed vector. Then we go to the outside of the number 8 and each individual circle. These are all closed vectors. And so we can just begin to work with these. Now just to make absolutely certain that I have no open vectors in any of this drawing here, I'll come out here away from any of these vectors, right click, come up here to selection, and then come over here to select all open vectors. I'll left click that, no open vectors in design. Okay? Now, it's been my experience with CAD files that this is not a normal case. Let me illustrate that by coming down here and opening a new instance of vCarve. And we'll create a new file. And I'm going to use the same measurements here. I'm not going to change anything. And this time I'm going to import another set of vectors. So I'll come up here to File, Import, Import Vectors, and we'll go to this one here. Select that drawing, and click Open. Now that imported directly to the center of my material, so I'm fine with this. Now let me click off to deselect, and I'll just right click, Selection, Select All Open Vectors. And everything except these two circles are selected. So that tells me that each one of these vectors here, well, those, those are connected. And these are not. So we have three open vectors here. And let's select here. Yeah, these are all open vectors meaning that there's, there are very few things that we can actually do with these vectors without joining them first. This is usually how vectors are imported from uh, a DXF file, in that the vectors are not joined, because the CAD software sees each vector as a separate entity. The fact that some of these are joined is a little bit unusual. But 
it does happen on occasion. So what we'll need to do before we can use this particular file is we have to join these vectors. And I'll do that by selecting them, again starting up here above the vectors, and draw that box there to select all of these vectors. Then come over here under Edit Objects to this icon, icon right here, Join Open Vectors. Click that. And we can see up here that of my selected vectors, I have three open vectors. After I join, I'll have one closed vector, and that's what I need to do. Now, up here, the tolerance, the factory default from Vectric is 0. 0.0004, meaning that the end points of the vectors have to be closer than 0. 0.0004 inches together to be joined by this process. Now you can adjust this if you'd like. I haven't found a need to. You can adjust it so that the vectors can be farther apart or adjust it so that the vectors have to be closer together before they'll join. I haven't found a need to make that change, so I run with the factory default. So with all my vectors selected, I can just click Join. And now, if I come over here and select it, it's all one closed vector. And I'll do the same over here. And again, I have two open vectors this time. And after joining, I have one closed vector. Now these vectors can be used to cut out these corner clamps. Now something to watch out for is the fact that there are 3D DXF files out there. And I'll show you what I mean by coming down here to this folder and selecting this DXF file. Now right off the bat if we look over here we can see the file size on this is 3.17 megabytes. Now, if you compare it to these other DXF files, this one's only 16 and a half kilobytes. And this one, even less. Six and not quite three quarters of a kilobyte. So compared to these two, this file is huge. That's one of the first telltale signs that this may be a three-dimensional DXF file. Now, in handling three-dimensional DXF files, there's a couple of ways of going about it. And the first one is to import it as a 3D file not as vectors. Now here I have that DXF file imported and it's extremely faint here in the 2D view. But if I switch over to the 3D view, there we have this file. It is a 3D file. There is a thickness. There is relief to this file. Now let me go ahead and just import it into vCarve Pro as we would a standard DXF file. Create a new file and just again accept everything as it is right now. Then attempt to import this as standard vectors. You'll see that number one it takes a long time for it to load. This is, again, a large file. It's still working. Still loading. OK, here we are finally. And I'm going to zoom in here. This is what gets imported if I attempt to import a 3D file as just as vectors, as a standard DXF. Not only is vCarve completely 
and totally confused by the sheer number of faces and surfaces here. But if you look closely, each segment of this perimeter rectangle is a separate vector in and of itself. And here we get into vector confusion because I've selected a, a vector down here, but as you can see, it's pink, but there's still black behind it. Am I selecting the top surface, the bottom surface, the center geometry? We don't know. So this would require a ton of cleanup to be able to import into vCarve as just standard vectors. Now, again, one way we could handle this would be to import it as a 3D file and then uh, cut it as a 3D file. And that's outside of the scope of this video, so I'm not going to show you how to do that this time. That's another video at a later date. So instead of going any further with this file, we'll go ahead and save this for a later date. We'll get back to our other two files, which we'll start with the 8-ball first. Now, again, because all of these vectors uh, are closed vectors, we are ready to work with these just like any other vectors that we may have created ourselves. So let's go ahead and play a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'll select these two vectors by drawing a box from right to left and I want to create a pocket in between these two vectors. So we'll switch over to the toolpaths tab and I'll come up here to the pocket toolpath. For this vector, I'd like to cut this into the surface of the material and then the letter 8 into the surface of the material. So let's go ahead and let's use a cut depth of about a sixteenth of an inch. So that's 0 0.0625. And uh, yes, I, well, it's a pretty large vector, so I'll go ahead and use a quarter inch end mill because we're only cutting a uh, sixteenth of an inch deep it'll do this in one pass I don't need to use a larger area clearance tool now because it's a circular pattern I will go ahead and use the offset uh, method to clear the pocket rather than using raster which would mean the bit would come over here and move back and forth from side to side it's just easier on the tool to use offset. I'm not going to ramp any plunge moves, but I will go ahead and just call this ball pocket. And we'll calculate that toolpath. Now here in my uh, preview window, I'm going to make my toolpath color Oh, select toolpath color Calvados. I don't know where that came from. Let's change it back to maple. And I'll set my toolpath color to black because, after all, an 8-ball is black. And let's preview that selected toolpath. Okay, now to change my view here in the 3D view, all I'm doing right now is I'm clicking, left-clicking the button. And I can move my mouse up and it's rocking this back and forth. Then I can come over here and by moving my scroll wheel forward I'm zooming in. But you'll notice that in the 3D view it's different from the 2D view. It's not proportional like the 2D view is. No matter where I place my cursor it zooms in and out from the center. So I have to zoom in and then move my view. So to move my view, after I've zoomed in, I press down on the scroll wheel. And then I can move my 3D view around. Then let go of the scroll wheel, zoom in, or zoom out, then zoom in.
So it's a little bit different from the 2D view. I had a question about that last week and forgot that I hadn't gone over that. So zoom in with the scroll wheel, press down on the scroll wheel and move the mouse to move within your 3D view. Go back up here and take a straight on, straight Z shot and fill the screen. Now we'll close the preview, come back over here to the 2D view, and I'm going to select these three vectors, again by drawing a box around them, come back up, do another pocket. And I'm going to use the same cut depth, but this time I think the quarter inch bit may be too big to fit in between the outside of the eight and the inside circles here. So I'll drop that down to an eighth inch end mill. Again, it'll do clear that in one pass. Again, it'll do it in offset. And I'll name this the number eight pocket. I'll calculate the toolpath. Again, up here, I'll change my toolpath color to black and we'll preview that toolpath. And there we go. So now I have this cool little eight ball that I can cut out, hang up on the wall, what have you, using those vectors that we imported from a DXF file. So with the eight ball cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and call this the end to this video. Uh, yeah, we do still have this other file over here that we could uh, demonstrate, but it's basically the same thing as our 8-ball, just using profile toolpaths instead of the pocket toolpaths. The point is that the vectors that we imported from a DXF file can be used just the same as any vectors we create ourselves. So that's it. If you got anything out of this video, I would appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button down below. If you'd like to continue to follow along with this series or any of my other CNC or woodworking adventures, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. Feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns down in the comments section below here. Now, if you'd rather not make a public comment, come on over here to my website, marklindsaycnc.com, and click that Contact Us link right here, and it'll bring you over to a page where you can leave me any comment that you'd like. I do see every single comment that comes in, and I try to answer as many as possible. marklindsaycnc.com is sponsored by Harneal Media. Whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and y'all take care.